Hey guys, it's Susie. In the case you haven't met me, welcome. I'm from the South. I specialize in education technology, but hopefully in a way that's fun, Southern of course, and also really clear. So today we're going to talk about another viewer request. How do you manage a classroom library on Canvas? Well, I think have three tips for you and then maybe a bonus tip. We'll see how we're doing when we get to the end. So stay tuned. So my first thought for creating a classroom library in Canvas is to embed books and make them clickable on your Bitmoji classroom. Now, if you haven't if you haven't gotten into Bitmoji classroom, you've been avoiding it like the plague, la la la. <laughs> then I show you some ways to use either Google Classroom or PowerPoint, or excuse me, not Google Classroom, Google Slides or PowerPoint to make your Bitmoji classroom. I have a whole video about that. Feel free to watch it. Now, I like Bitmoji classroom for just a few selections or like a featured book. Uh, so I'm going to work from kind of a place of small volume to most volume in my tips. And so I just have one book featured on my bookshelf. This is clearly a bookshelf, but I have Pride and Prejudice. If that makes you want to gag, then sorry. <laughs> and all I did was I just went up to insert and I searched for that under pictures. Um, so once I have it, I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to link it to something. So what do I want to link it to? Well, you have a couple options. I found the online ebook, which mine is old enough that you can read it online. You don't feel like you're violating anybody's copyright, so I don't feel guilty. And then the other option is I found it, excuse me if that would quit going, coming down. Um, I also found it read to you on YouTube. So you can link it however you want. I'm just going to link this one. I'm going to copy the file. You need to be in full PowerPoint to make this work. If you're in Google Slides, it's only online, so links work differently that differently there. But if you want to link a picture in PowerPoint, as I am in my Bitmoji classroom, I have it selected. I'm going to right click, go to link, and click right there. Okay, and now when a kid goes to, uh, if I save this as a PDF or whatever I've taught you on my website, um, if you're using personal OneDrive and you want to embed it, or you're embedding Google Slides, now when the kid clicks it, it'll go somewhere. Okay, so that's one way to have a classroom library is just feature a book a week, a book a month, or a couple books, but you don't want to make it too crazy. I feel like Bitmoji classroom can get cray cray. Just my personal opinion. And I am working in a coffee shop today, so uh, pardon the background noise. But anyway, um, a second thought I have for you is if you want to feature more books, but you want them to be curated in some way, I would create a page. And again, you can create this under a module, which is what I usually prefer, or you may, may have it accessible by a button, but somehow your kids are ac accessing it on your front page. I'm going to go ahead and click Pages. I'm going to view all and make a new one. And I'm going to call this Classroom Library. And my tip here is going to be to curate a selection of online books. So we haven't gotten really into if you have books in your classroom, because I'm assuming a lot of you are working digitally. And even if you're not, you want to feature some digital books. So I'm just going to create a table. And I know I made mine way bigger than what I'm going to actually use this morning. And you can call it something like this month's themed books. And then I might call it kindness or something like that. Okay. And you can use these books over and over again, you know, have your kids pick one where they talk about problem and solution or where they talk about character, where they talk about elements of the plot. And then you go to one of my favorite websites, Storyline Online, which if you've not heard me mention this, I share it in a lot of different sessions that I do. But it is, they're all read by Screen Actors Guild members. So like Betty White is reading Harry the Dirty Dog, <laughs> which I loved as a kid. You can see who the actor or actress is here. You can see what the book is, the suggested grade level. They have lesson plans, all kinds of stuff. I'm honestly just going to grab a few, and I'm going to take screenshots to put in. Now, um, you can try right-clicking and copying image that looks like it's going to work. I have heard, though, that sometimes if your kids, if you know your kids are using, um, you know, mostly tablets and phones, that sometimes these images don't show up. So you might want to save the image instead. So copy image and then just upload it. So I'm just showing you the quick version of how it could look. Clearly not just picking books on kindness, but you could curate yours better. And I like this because I feel like it's very organized. You can change them out from time to time. Like maybe, maybe even save it for next year if you know you're going to need books that feature strong characters because you guys are studying characterization. Then, um, you know, I can save this page and just hide it in my course navigation. And that way, next year, I have this to come back to, but I can change it out for my students. I like how organized it is. I can feature more books than I feel like you can in the Bitmoji Classroom. And then I just link. So I'm going to start here, link to URL, and then just grab that link. I'm probably linking the wrong one. I'm just linking a random one. <laughs> but I am going to just paste that in. Remember, if you see a blank, you have a link. And you could just continue organizing that way. Of course, you can make it as cute as you want. This table, if you go back into table properties, I showed this again in a video that says something about cute canvas. 
um, you can go in and you can completely eliminate the border, which is a zero. You can give the border a color. You can give the background a color. You can be as fancy as you want. Again, I'm more functional than cute, but this is a second idea of how you can feature a curated selection of books and then hide this unhide it as you go. Maybe you make a module that's called Classroom Library and then every month you have a page underneath there, okay? That's your second option. I think it looks kind of cute. So my third idea for the classroom library assumes that you want to go whole hog. Maybe you want to feature every book you have in your classroom library. So I could call this Mrs. Lolly's. I need a, some spacing there. And what I'm, library. <laughs> Can't type with people watching. Anyway, I could say something like click through each page to see all the books you can check out. Okay. This could be great for a physical library where you just want a guide that goes in Canvas. Or again, you could link just like I do. I like this one. Um, yeah, with the, the, we'll pretend that's a chai in there, even though it has coffee beans. <laughs> um, but I don't know. Maybe I like this one better. Y'all, this is ridiculous. Yeah, I like that one. Um, anyway, so this is great if you want to feature your whole library at one go, have kids be able to use this as a visual guide. Now, there are lots of tools outside of Canvas that will do this, and this is even outside of Canvas, but it can be embedded in there. And so um, you can just create a page, per, a page per genre. So I'm just going to do Control-M, okay, and then I can say Adventure. And then maybe I have some Will Hobbs books pictured here, or I have... Um, I'll shoot with that one series. Maybe some C.S. Lewis. I can think of several adventure series. They're just, you know, leaving me at the moment. I taught middle school before I taught high school. And so anyway, you could have pictures here that show your whole classroom library and what's available for checkout. And then kids can um, maybe even take a Canvas survey. They can take a Google form that you've embedded just to let you know they want to check out a book, you want to return it. Um, lots of options here, but I like this one because it allows you to feature your whole collection. So again, Bitmoji Classroom, I would just fe feature one or two because you got too many other busy things in there. The linked table, you can feature a whole selection, but then if you want to feature your whole stinking library, maybe you even take a picture of it, of every book you have available in that genre, um, and then you can put those in here. It's more just for kids to browse, and then they can go to another website to check them out. I'm going to show you my favorite website if I can find it. Give me just a minute found it. It's been years since I've used it, so I wanted to see if it was still available. It's called BookSource, classroom.booksource.com, and this is the one I used because not only does it create a really nice visual, but it also gives you a way to barcode scan to create your book collection, but also when kids want to check them out. So if you have access to a scanner or think that would be kind of fun, I'm, I'm dorky and I think it's kind of fun to scan things, and so um, this would give another option that's free. I know some of you have like Fall at Destiny or something like that that makes this, uh, you know, something you don't need. But if you not only want to feature what books you have, but also um, allow students to check them out, then you could on your classroom library PowerPoint slide, I'm just going to take a screenshot of this. Here we go. Okay. Pretend these are all the books I really have. Then you could say something like, to check these out, go to this code or make a QR code. Little bonus tip here. I have installed on my um, on my toolbar in Google Chrome, I have a QR code maker. So whatever website is pulled up, I can just click this and it'll give me a QR code that will go there. Now this is pretend, this is to the website, uh, just to the main page, but you could always take that QR code and say, you know, as kids are browsing and they find a book they want, they could go here to check it out. So you let me know what you decide with that. My main thought was just to show you that you could create, um, you know, PowerPoint or Google Slides that then embed. So how do I get this in there? Well, again, this is from my Bitmoji Classroom video. But if I'm going to use a PowerPoint, I like to do File Export PDF because then that creates something that I can very easily put into my page that will still preserve the links. If you're using uh, Google Slides, then when you go to File, you can uh, get an embed code for, or when you go to share you can get an embed code for that and you can put that on canvas as well so if you need more details about how i embedded i will take a screenshot and remind you what that bitmoji classroom video looks like this tip is a revisit from a couple things i made a canvas for little accessibility video and then i also made one that specialized in immersive reader and um, i just wanted to revisit that canvas has a tool called immersive reader built in that will read two kids 
So maybe when I say classroom library, you don't feature like a bunch of children's books because you teach older kids, but you still need them to be able to read and access text. Now I'm using something that is copyright friendly. <laughs> so just be aware, I'm not copying like a whole text of a person who's still living, but I have chapter one of Pride and Prejudice. And when I paste it into Canvas on a page, erase this part, and I save and publish that, kids are able to read it with the immersive reader. Now I'm in a free account that is part of the paid account, so just be aware of that. Um, but when they come to this page, they'll see a book with a speaker and they will be able to use immersive reader. So it'll read it to them in a certain amount of time. It'll help them with the processing. Go watch that video if you haven't. So that was just a bonus tip, not really classroom library, but reading in the classroom. Your classroom library, as always, your homepage, your course will always be cuter than mine. I hope that I just get the ball rolling for you, but I did want to help you revisit the videos I mentioned. So I put screenshots of what they look like here. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys, I put my heart into these videos, so I hope you loved it. I hope you've loved all of them. But if you haven't, then make sure you go back and watch the previous videos. I'm making playlists for you all the time. So if you're somebody who wants time savers, there's a playlist for that. If you want to gamify, playlist for that and all of my themes of my blog. So, did you like it? Go ahead and click the thumb below. If you really liked it, I'd love if you shared it on your favorite social media channel. I'm at Susie Lolly on Twitter. And then finally, my very favorite is if you subscribe. Subscribe to YouTube and subscribe on the blog. Take care.